Here are a few uh, quick multiple choice questions to uh, start the momentum chapter. And for this very first multiple choice question, it states that which of the following is a vector quantity? So uh, vectors have both magnitude and direction. Okay, so uh, for option A, mass, well mass is a scalar, that's magnitude only, and time is also a scalar, energy is also a scalar, but momentum is a vector. M momentum has both magnitude and direction, and we're gonna find out that in this chapter, the units for momentum will be uh, kilograms times meters per second. Okay, so uh, D is our first answer for this particular question. Here's another modified multiple choice question. And for this problem, we need to answer this question where which of the following, which of the following is not a vector? Okay, so if we go down the list here, uh, mass is a scalar, magnitude only. Impulse is a vector, velocity is a vector, and momentum is also a vector. So the correct answer here is option A. Option A is not a vector. In this uh, next multiple choice question, it states which of the following is a scalar quantity? So scalars have magnitude only. Okay, so if, if we go down the list again, work is a scalar, force is a vector, velocity is a vector, and momentum is also a vector. So the best option here is option A, work is a scalar, and scalars have magnitude only. Now let's get into some uh, momentum calculation questions. And for this next question, uh, the question states, the momentum of a male Olympic sprinter is about. So we need to kind of approximate the momentum of a male Olympic sprinter. Okay, so uh, when we're dealing with a male Olympic sprinter, roughly the weight of a male Olympic sprinter is around, probably around 85.7 kilograms. That's an approximation. And uh, when you're a sprinter, you know, you are going um, pretty quick, right? You can probably um, complete the 100 meter dash in, uh, in around 10 seconds. So let's just say that the uh, speed is gonna be around uh, 10 meters per second for an Olympic male sprinter. Okay, so we know that momentum equals to mass times velocity. And the mass here is 85.7 and the velocity here is 10. So if we just ignore direction here, uh, we get around 857, and the units are kilograms times meters per second. Now, if we go down the list here, uh, option B is roughly a good approximation. Oh, sorry, not option B, uh, option C here uh, looks to be like a close approximation there. All these other numbers are actually, uh, you know, they're off by quite a bit there. So uh, option C is a very safe kind of estimation for this first uh, calculation question here. In the next question, we have another uh, momentum question where we need to kind of make a, an approximation here. So uh, this time we have a small car traveling at, city, uh, at, at a city speed limit and we need to find the momentum that would best describe that particular situation. Okay, so if we're dealing with a small car, uh, this is roughly around, um, you know, it's roughly around 1,000 kilograms uh, to um, 1,300 kilograms roughly. And if we're going at uh, a city speed limit, this is roughly around uh, 50 kilometers an hour. And if I translate that to uh, meters per second, that's gonna be about 13.88 meters per second. Okay, so if I go back to momentum, momentum is really uh, mass times velocity, All right? So if I use the mass of uh, 1300 kilograms, and a city speed of 50 kilometers per hour, which is roughly 13.88 meters per second, I get an answer around um, 18,044 kilograms dot meters per second. Okay, so if I look at my four options, A, B, C, and D, uh, I would say option B is a good approximation to a, a small car going at city speed limits. Uh, you can definitely see with options A, C, and D, those are fairly um, off by quite, uh, quite a bit there. So uh, option B would be a very good approximation for the momentum of a small car traveling at city speed limits. Here's another quick uh, multiple choice question. So which of the following correctly describes momentum and impulse? All right, so momentum and impulse. 
Okay, so we know momentum is a vector and impulse is also a vector. So the best option here is option A. So just another quick definition question on um, identifying momentum and impulse as vector quantities. For uh, this next question, it states which are which are correct units for a change in momentum. Okay, so when I'm dealing with a change in momentum, uh, we generally uh, denote that uh, using the notation delta p. This is a change in momentum, and a change in momentum is also equal to impulse. All right, and uh, impulse is the same thing as force times a change in time. And we know that force is measured in newtons and time is measured in seconds. So um, um, the units that we can use for a change in momentum is actually newtons times seconds, which is option B. Let's take a look at a vector concept question now. And for this next question, uh, we have a, a ball here that is traveling at 5.7 meters per second. And then it hits the wall uh, about here and then rebounds and it rebounds off with the same speed of 5.7 meters per second and basically we want to find the direction of the change in balls momentum here okay so we want to figure out what that vector looks like okay well if I go back to the beginning here um, I'm gonna label this part here so this vector right here in blue this is our initial momentum vector and I'll label that P naught with a hat so that's a vector right there and then this vector, which I'm highlighting in red here, that is our final momentum. So that vector is now highlighted in red. And I wanna figure out, we wanna figure out what does the change in momentum vector look like? Okay, so that's our goal for this particular problem. Okay, so if I just kinda of go to the bottom here, uh, I wanna state that a change in momentum is really equal to your final momentum and then we're just subtracting our initial momentum. And our goal is what does this vector look like? Okay, um, if I start off with uh, our final momentum vector, if I go back to our diagram, uh, that vector is really going in this direction, right? So that was our final momentum vector drawn, drawn like that. And uh, basically now we need to kind of combine our, um, our momentum, our, our negative initial momentum vector and our our, our initial momentum vector is kind of going that southeast direction. So if I want to subtract that vector, it's actually going in the opposite direction like that. And I can label that as negative P naught. So that's my initial uh, momentum vector with the, uh, the negative sign right there. And if I combine these vectors from head to tail, this right here, this vector which I'm drawing in the north direction, this is your change in momentum vector. Okay, so uh, this is my answer right here. Uh, it's basically a vector going in the north direction and that represents the change in momentum because basically we're just adding the vectors from head to tail here. Let's get back to a few more of these uh, definition questions for units and uh, we wanna find the correct units for impulse again. Okay, so if I'm dealing with impulse, this is really equal to a change in momentum. And another way that we can describe a change in momentum is really a force times a change in time. And as mentioned before in previous questions, we know that force is measured in newtons and time is measured in seconds. So the answer here is gonna be D. The units for impulse are newtons times seconds. Here is another uh, definition question for impulse. So which of the following is equal to impulse? So once again, uh, impulse, if I write out the general formula for impulse, this is equal to a change in momentum. And there's a few formulas for that in this course. One is force times delta T. And uh, change in momentum is also your mass times your final velocity minus your mass times your initial velocity. Uh, but impulse is indeed a change in momentum. Let's get into a few uh, graphing questions now for the concept of impulse. So the area under which graph represents the impulse delivered by a tennis racket to a ball. Okay, so let's start off with impulse again. So we know impulse, as mentioned in the, some of the previous problems, we know impulse is equal to a force times a change in time. Okay, so if we're looking at our graph right here, if we're multiplying force and time, we generally want force on the y-axis and we want time on the x-axis. 
So we're looking for that kind of a relationship because um, if I'm looking at the area underneath the, gra uh, underneath the graph here, um, basically if you take the length and the width right here, you're essentially just multiplying the force times the time, right? So this right here, the area underneath the graph represents impulse. Okay, so if I look at all four of these options here, uh, the best option is option A because we have force on the y axis and we have time on the x axis. And what that really means is that the area under the graph here, this represents impulse. So A is the best option there. Here's another vari a variation uh, question to the previous one. So uh, in this question, we have an object experiences uh, varying forces as shown in the following FT graphs. And which of the following shows the largest change in momentum here? Okay, so uh, we know for impulse, this is really a force times a change in time. And if we want to find the largest change in momentum, um, basically, when we're looking at a graphical question here, where we have uh, force and time on the x and y axes, basically we want to have the biggest area possible. All right. So if I want a very high impulse here, I want to have a very high area underneath the graph for a force time graph here. Okay. So if I look at all four of these options, which of these four options has the biggest area underneath the curve? And uh, just by inspection here, that looks like option D. So uh, the area underneath the graph here, this all represents impulse. And we're looking for the uh, biggest area underneath the curve there, and that would be option D. Here's one last uh, graphing question for this first uh, homework video guide. And uh, the graph below shows momentum versus time for a spacecraft while it's firing its rocket engines in space. What does the slope of this graph represent? Okay, so we know that slope equals to basically the rise over the run. The rise is momentum, and the run is time. All right, so we've got to figure out uh, momentum over time equals to what? Okay, well, let's go back to our impulse formula here. So impulse is equal to force times a change in time. Okay, and essentially impulse is just a change in momentum. So we're saying a change in momentum is equal to force times a change in time. Okay, so if I just divide both sides of the equation by the time, uh, I can divide that by the time, divide this by time, and basically I, I just have force on the right hand side and I have momentum, a change in momentum, over a change in time, which is essentially the same units as momentum over time there. So the slope here just equals to a net force on, this, on the spacecraft. So the best option here would be option C, is the net force on the spacecraft.